Hello, Tab Nation. How's it going? I'm Tom, and today we are going to be doing a gaming script. Haven't really done one in a while, don't know why. Just haven't been into gaming lately. But I have been playing Seven Days to Die. It's been around for quite a long time, and for some odd reason, it's still an alpha. But it's a fun game, it's so addicting. If you've never played it, you should definitely check it out. But today we're going to be talking about three different things that you could do with auto hotkeys and this game. So the first one is driving and auto mining. Uh, the next one is auto fire off. Uh, that doesn't mean a gun. I'm just talking about like the furnace turning the fire off because sometimes I'll throw like hundreds of things in there to be smelted. And then I'll kind of walk away, come back, and it's like, oh no, it's already done, but it's still wasting my firewood. So how to auto-turn that off? And the last one is a to-do list and days till. And that's basically going to show us a counter, letting us know when the next horde's coming and when the next restock of the traders is going to be. And allow us to add some to-do lists. game like this, it's very easy to have like 10 different things you want to get done. And very easily get distracted with more and then forget about that one thing you wanted to do so that's kind of the premise behind that so we're going to run through the code real quick not going to do a lot of talking about everything i've done other videos but just kind of a quick breakdown so we're just going to start with current day equals one uh, you'll see how to change that here in a little bit uh, the gui that just pops up wherever Kind of in the middle of the screen there you can change this to wherever you want if you want it to originally start obviously you can move it once you uh, get the script running but this is just kind of the starting location set timer note save 30 seconds or 300 milliseconds that's basically going to save our to-do list every 30 seconds to a file on our desktop so the first one is driving and auto mining uh, auto mining is pretty straightforward. You're basically just, you know, hitting a lot and then moving forward a little bit. So this is only going to work if the window active is seven days to die. If you're out of another program, the script will kind of just stop working. Don't really need to worry about that. I've talked about that. So we're going to push F1 and we're going to show an example of all this in action later in the video. We're going to send W down and left shift down. The reason why is because we push W to drive forward and then we hold left shift down to drive faster. So that's going to basically hold it. So I can push F1, put my hands up in the air, and I'm just going to start driving as fast as I can in a straight line. Obviously, you can still use your hand and move the mouse. I like this because I can just use my hand to steer and then I can like sit there with my phone and like quickly answer text without having to worry about holding the W and left shift down. Uh, then what's going to happen is when we do uh, let go of F1 or push it again, it's going to release those. It's going to do left shift up and W up. So when we press it again, it's going to go ahead and stop our moped, motorcycle, whatever you're driving. Auto fire off. Now with this one, something I just want to point out is that you do have to be into the interface of the furnace. You can't start the furnace and then go off and do other stuff because it has to actively be watching what's going on. So you definitely have to be in the furnace while it's working or it won't work because it won't be able to see what's actually happening. So just a heads up on there. And there's some tool tips here that just remind you of how to actually set this up because there is a little bit of a setup that you have to do in order for this to work. I'll be honest, this is the one I use the least. I hardly ever use it. Uh, I only really use it if I'm in the middle of cooking stuff and I need to smell a crap load of stuff. So that's it. But we'll obviously see all this in action a little bit. And this is using a, a pixel search. And you'll see kind of what that means. And you can also watch my pixel search videos to understand a little bit better. The last one is our to-do list and days till. This one's going to be F3. Now, obviously, you guys can change this to whatever you want. If you don't want it to be F3, you could change this to Control A, F12, uh, tilde key, whatever you want. So it's going to do a file read. You know, the first time we open it, it wants to see if we already have notes. 
I personally just have it pointing at my desktop with a file called ahk7d2d.txt. You can change this file path to whatever you want. If you have it in your documents or you want to rename the tax file, rename this to whatever you want and whatever path you want. So this is something you can change. I just have it pointing straight at my desktop. It's just easier for this video. Here we're using a toggle and that just basically means an on and off switch. And this is our GUI. GUI means GUI. Can't even talk right now. Graphical user interface. So you'll see a little bit better what this looks like. You don't really probably understand what this means, um, but this is just kind of setting it up with our buttons, our edit field, that kind of stuff. Uh, if I push F1 again, so the first time I push, or sorry, F3, the first time I push F3, it's going to open the GUI. The next time I push F3, it's going to save the coordinates. So if I had moved it from its original starting point, for me, for example, I usually put it in the top right corner. Uh, it's going to save those coordinates and then close it. And then if I push F3 again, it's going to open it again, and it's going to be at those original coordinates that saved when I closed it. So it's going to remember where you had it last and just kind of close it. And that space doesn't need to be there. There we go. It's a little better. So, like I said, you'll see this a little bit better in action, understand a little bit better. Numpad add, uh, another thing you can change. When you press this, this is just pushing on your numpad plus symbol. Obviously, you are going to need to change this if you do not have a numpad. You can change it to F10, whatever, once again. But what this means is every time I push the plus symbol on my numpad, it's going to say, oh, it's a new day add you know to how many days to the horde well it was six now it's five how many days to restart or restock it was two now it's one the reason we're doing this manually is because it is next it is just way too much work to code it to actually be able to read the game files i mean it's insane what you have to do to just figure out how to access the memory for this game, figure out what that variable is called. It's just not worth it. I mean, if you guys, you know, someone watching this wants to do it, definitely do it. Send the script over to me and I'll be happy to share it. But this is just so much simpler. Like, I know it's manually, but it's just, it's not worth the amount of work. It would take hours and hours just for something simple that I could just push a button to do. So I just left it at that. Uh, so yeah, here it's just doing the horde counting. So basically it's kind of doing the math here. I know I can clean this up a little bit later, but this was the simplest and fastest way. It's basically saying if the current day is between 1 and 7, subtract the current day by 7, and then it's going to display that, saying, oh, well, there's 6 days left. So this is just kind of doing the math, as you see, 1 through 7. Uh, currently, this only goes up to day 98. I will be expanding on this. I just got tired of copying and pasting and changing these integers. But uh, right now it only works up to day 98. If you guys want to do it yourself before I get to it, all you gotta do is copy this, paste it, and then use that last number there. So you go 98, and then you just add seven days and then copy that down here too. So that's really all you gotta do. And that way you can expand it past working for 98 days. It'll do the math a little farther. Trader, exact same thing. We're just using a different variable here for restock is our new variable versus hoard. Same thing. Uh, once again, this one currently only goes up to day 75. Same thing, just copy paste, change the numbers to what you need them to be if you want to go past day 75. And then down here is just where it's going to kind of update the GUI, uh, put those new numbers in there. When you push that plus symbol, it's going to do the math, and then it's going to display the new number there for you. Note save. As you remember at the very top of the script, that's where we had that every 30 seconds save. This is where it's going to be doing that. So it's going to delete the original file, and then it's going to append it. So once again, just change these file paths right here and here to wherever you want. If you don't want it on your desktop or you want the text file to be named something different, just make sure to change line 281 and 283. I probably should have made this a variable at the top of the script, but oh well. Uh, and then F9 is just a reload. 
all that means is when you push F9, it's basically almost like closing the program and running it again. So like a fresh run in case something goes wrong or you just want to start it over. Maybe you're switching to a new world and you want to start that over. Uh, we got Q here. Q is basically a toggle. So when I press Q, it's actually going to hold my mouse button down left. It's just going to hold it. So, you know, if you need it to kind of just go at something, like tree chopping is what I use it for mostly. It's just going to hold my left key down. Uh, and then when I push Q again, it's then going to release my mouse. So, yeah. Uh, water feud. Um, this is kind of a reminder thing. Uh, this is the tilde key here. It's going off every 10 minutes. And that is... Where is that? Oh, live. What that's going to do is this is kind of a way to auto-feed yourself in case maybe you're running a server and your friends are all still playing, but you kind of want to walk away. Well, the problem with that is you'll die <laughs> because you'll run out of food. So this is going to send zero. So basically you put the food in the zero slot on your hotbar. It's going to sleep one second. It's going to click, sleep one second, and then it's going to send nine. Nine is where you're going to put your water, or vice versa. It doesn't really matter which slot the food or water is in. And it's going to sleep one second, and then it's going to click. So this is basically just going to auto-feed you. Um, I do need to adjust this a little bit, which I will do before I do that. But it doesn't really matter for you guys. All right, so lots of stuff going on here. There's like three, four things really that kind of help you with the gameplay. I get so annoyed of just having to hold a key down, especially like when I'm driving. I hate holding both the left shift and W at the same time. So that's the one I use the most is driving so that I, like my hand doesn't have to cramp up or whatever, or my hand's free now to do something else while I'm driving. I can text somebody. So yeah. Now that we kind of did a brief run through of all the code, we are going to go ahead and see this in action. All right, now that we got the game loaded, we're going to go ahead and just start with F3, actually, um, just because it's nighttime. So I'm waiting for it to get a little brighter for the other things, just so it's easier to see. So F3, we're going to press that. Here is our little note box. So like I said, it saves your location. So let's say I want to have it up here, or let's just put it over here instead, just for this video. Um, I you know can close it. Next time I push F3, oh, that was weird. Well, it should save the location, so I'll just have to fix that real quick. But you know, we take this, it's day 72, it looks like in this game. So I'm gonna do 72. I'm gonna go ahead and push update and that it's going to say till horde so there's five days left until the horde come and then restock is in four days which just means it's basically just got restocked so you can do two things here you can manually push the button here plus you know now it's 73 days or i can on my numpad push the plus symbol there just because that's nice because my thumb is right there with my mouse i can just click that so i'm going to do that uh, so plus we're going to go ahead and push F2. Now you're supposed to get a tooltip, really. Uh, for some reason, I'm having issues with that. Um, but every so often, you sometimes have to push it a few times. And the tooltip is supposed to be where your mouse is. But with games, coordinates can be a little funky. So it's kind of hard to see, but it actually is up here. So it's saying click on fire off button. So that's right here. Turn off. So I'm going to click that. Click on first empty slot up here. So I'm going to click right here where the empty slot is. Now, I normally would have an item there. And so you just kind of pick a color on the item that's very specific to that item. Uh, you know, it could be if it's steel, you just click on the silver or whatever. You click on that. And then it's pretty much just going to go ahead and go for it. So now you can get up, walk away, go to the bathroom, whatever. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, image search and pixel search kind of suck. Uh, they're very, especially when it comes to video games, they can be very kind of buggy. So the other two things I showed you work amazingly. They work perfectly. I'll fix that kind of little coordinate, saving your coordinates thing. That's an easy fix. But this can kind of be a little bit eh here and there. So you really got to kind of 
maybe not fully trusted. This is the one I would say would probably be used by far the least just because of the issues it can run into with image search or a uh, pixel search. You know, in a video game, the sun moves. That can ch change the color because of, you know, the shading. Maybe, you know, whoever this drone owns this drone walks in front of this fire. Well, suddenly the background might change a little bit because they're standing there, their shadows casting on my screen, stuff like that. Uh, so, you know, play around with it, see how well it works for you, if it's something you're interested in. But by far the one I use the most is the F1 for driving on the moped. I love having that. So, that is the things I have. If you guys have any other ideas on things that you think would be great to have automated within 7 Days to Die, definitely let me know in the comments below. I play this game all the time. I'm always looking for new ideas. And maybe if I get enough good ones, I will do a part 2 to this video. So definitely subscribe, hit that bell notification so that you can see when that comes out along with other games that I automate the boring stuff with or the hard stuff that you know your hand can cramp with <laughs> all right guys i'll see you all in the next one